Hi, this is the more tools for um, Spike Prime 3.0.2023. Um, and we're talking about specifically the gyro turn to angle my block. This my block is used to turn the robot to a specific angle before we move. This is important because we want to make sure that A, we turn slowly so that we don't mess up the gyro. Testing has shown that that happens. But we also want to make sure that we're pointed mostly, maybe one degree off, in the direction we want to go so that once we start driving forward, we can be sure the distance is going to be accurate. If we didn't do that, some of that distance, in other words, the settings on the encoders, would get eaten up or used to turn the robot. Doing this first means that's not going to happen, which means you're, you could literally write everything down on paper using a ruler and measuring it out, and you would be very close and have to make just a few modifications. And I've done that a number of times. All right? All right, so we're going to go, we're going to go and discuss this. So this is a my block, and it's defined here. Okay, when you go into your my blocks, let's go into our my blocks down here. Let's see. Let me go into my my blocks. You come in here and you say make a block. When it makes that block, that this, it is going to put that up in the top um, right away uh, uh, in the top corner of your program. So you got to go find it. It's kind of messy how they do it, but that's what's going to happen. Anyway, in this case, I've defined gyro turn to angle, and I've passed it. I have a value here, which is a parameter, right? Um, and it's set to the word angle, okay? Um, and essentially, that's a value that you're going to pass to me, and I'll show you an example of it. And then I'm going to manipulate a bunch of numbers here, and we're going to get it to do what we want. Now, two of the variables that I... Uh, worry about are um, gyro turn speed min and gyro turn speed max. Now the idea here, the way this is done, the idea was anyway, that if you don't have this set or it's set to zero, then I'm going to force it to a three. So if you forget to set it at the top, I'm going to force it to a three. Um, gyro turn speed max, the same thing. If you forget to set it at the top, I'm going to force it here. And that's what these two settings are for. Now, what I discovered was as I was testing and testing, and for some reason, they were both set to, to 15. And I think it's because in an earlier program, I had set them to 15. So um, when you're working with the computer like this and you're running from hit play, um, I think you can run into a problem where the thing may already be set. And... Um, and, and, and it's not going to get reset here. Why? Because the value is not zero. Now, uh, it's important that you set it when you do your init settings, and that'll take care of the problem. So that's why if you look back on the init settings, you'll see that it is set there. But anyway, again, uh, uh, so what are these for? The speed max is the maximum speed that this piece of code is going to turn that robot and again we keep it slow because we don't want the robot um, to turn too fast because that does affect the gyro the speed min means it'll keep correcting or trying to correct using the the gyro to do that but if the speed turn or the correction amount is less than three meaning three percent of the motor you might run into a problem where it won't actually turn okay so you can up that number Three is always is a good number. I have the max speed to 20, which is a good number. Sometimes I use 15. Okay. All right. So now we're going to get to here. Now there's a lot of stuff here, but believe me, it's not that hard to understand. Repeat until this is the yaw. Okay. We call it the gyro. The yaw, think about a plane. Yaw is, is turning left or turning right not tipping the wings that's roll okay and not tipping down or up that's that's tilt this is yaw think about moving left or right that's all it is read and re, repeat until the yaw is in between angle minus 0.05 
and angle plus 0.05. Wow, 0.05. That's pretty accurate. Actually, this has worked very well. Um, I'm not going to tell you that the angle actually gets in that close, but this works real well to get me as close to that angle as possible. Okay. Now, I'm going to set a value called gyro current angle. Okay? And if you look over here in our our variables, I'm going to come down here and scroll up. Uh, gyro current angle. I've defined that here, and you notice it's checked. Gyro current angle. Why is that? It's checked because if you come over here and look at your display, gyro current angle, there it is, and it's giving you a readout. This was from the last time I ran the robot. So that's gyro, that's the reason that that variable is there so that I can see it, what angle it, it's at if I'm using that display. And actually I have a video of this whole process and you can see that value changing. Now, correction. Now, I have been using this idea that underscore correction, underscore correction, if it has an underscore, it's a variable that we are using in these things and you should not set them. See them all here? There's a whole bunch of them here. Okay, there's a whole bunch of them here. All right, you should not use those because they're going to end up getting uh, uh, changed by me or by my code. All right, all right. So, correction, set the correction to angle minus gyro current angle. Here's gyro current angle, and here's the angle we want. So, for example, if giant, uh, gyro current angle was a 2, that means I'm two degrees to the right. I'm off two degrees to the right. Okay. So angle is zero. Minus two gives me a correction of minus two. Okay. Correction initial simply saves that for my screen. So this is for debug. This is so that I can track it. I'm not using it right now. All right, so our value, our current value for correction is a negative 2. I'm setting the direction to 1. Here I'm setting the direction to 1. Direction is a multiplier. Anything multiplied by 1 is going to be set the same way, so it's not a problem. However, if correction is less than 0, which means correction is negative, then I'm going to set my direction to negative 1. Okay? All right? Again, if it's used as a multiplier now, it's going to flip the sign on anything that I multiplied against. Now, wow, here we go. If ABS of correction is greater than gyro turn speed max, remember gyro turn speed max sets the maximum speed that I'm allowed to turn. All right, because I don't want to turn too fast. Okay? ABS simply says, just give me the number. Don't give me the sign. So basically, this is now saying if. So correction is currently a negative 2. But ABS of correction is 2. If 2 is greater than gyro max speed, then set correction to this times direction. It's basically saying set it if the number is bigger. In this case, it is not. absolute of correction is less than turn speed min, then set the correction to gyro turn speed min di direction. In our case here, we said it was a negative 2. So if 2, absolute value, is less than gyro turn speed min, which is a 3, then set correction to gyro turn speed min times the direction, which is negative, so it's going to be a minus 3. Right? Seems a little complicated, but it really isn't if you if you if you think about it. All right. After all of that is done, then I'm setting a value called correction final to correction. This is for debugging. Okay? It's not going to affect anything. If I wanted to, I could take that. Let's go over here. 
I wanted to play around with this and see what it was doing, I could come over here. Then I could say, all right, let's say correction final. I want that on there. And correction initial. I want that on there. So there's final, there's initial. So I could watch these things change the whole time this thing is running. Okay? So I'm going to turn those off because I don't want them on there. But those are for debug. Okay. All right. Set correction to final to correction. That's for debug. Now here's where we're saying start moving. Correction. That's going to go to my left wheel. Okay. Correction. Now remember where we are. We're slightly pointed to the right two degrees. Correction is my left wheel. I mean, excuse me, this left bubble represents the left wheel. The other bubble represents the white, white wheel. So the correction right now, because it was two up here, it went through this and it's been set to the speed, but negative, right? Now, we come down to here, so it's going to be minus two. Now you say minus two, what's that going to do? Think about it now. Pretend you're in a wheelchair. It's the left wheel, right? And correction times minus one. So again, the correction is minus two. So this one is going to get a two. This one is going to get a minus two. So what's going to happen? Actually, let me see. Minus times minus, right? Speed. It's going to be a two, right? This is going to be two. This is going to be minus two. So what's going to happen is the left wheel is going to go backwards at a speed of two. Excuse me, three. The left wheel is going to go back at a speed of 3, minus 3, and the front wheel is going to go forward, right, at a speed of 3. What's that going to do? It's going to make us want to turn back towards the wheel. Right? Makes sense? So now, this is in a repeat loop. Remember? So now we come up here. And then it's going to say, all right, let's go check the yaw again and see if it's between these numbers. If it is, then go through this again. If it is not, in other words, if it is close enough, okay, then we're going to stop moving, okay, and we're going to repeat until the drive motor measure, which we have set to the uh, E drive, which is the right wheel, if that rel level relative position is equal to zero. We're, we're, we're rounding it to zero because it's never going to get to zero, but it's going to get close to zero. Okay? So if it's, if it's inside of negative one and one, right, it's going to say, okay, I'm rounded to zero. I'm good. If that happens, I'm going to set the drive motor uh, position. I'm going to keep resetting this, right? Set, set, wait a tenth of a second, then try it again. What am I doing here? I'm doing this because I'm trying to wait for the robot to stop moving, to slow down and stop moving. Okay? And once it has stopped moving, then this will drop out and I'll be done with it. Okay? That's it. That's it. It seems kind of complicated, but if you sit down and look at the math and watch what's going on, it's actually pretty easy to understand. And I encourage you to do that because a judge might ask you, well, how does that actually work? How does the gyro work? And you could explain it. Now, you want to do it in simple terms, but if you say, well, you have the two wheels blah, 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 and go through this, you can easily explain it. All right? Good luck.